bubbling lakes in the Arctic, gas coming out of the lakes, you can actually light them on fire. The bubbling lakes of the Arctic. This is Essia Lake in the Arctic. Bubbling lakes speeding up the Arctic permafrost melt, which means that we'll have a huge problem with our climate change. It'll just make it worse. Latest scientific studies show that Earth is undergoing radical changes, and this will happen over the next 100 years if we don't cut down the emission of greenhouse gases. The Earth, as we know it, may change so drastically, so dramatically, that it could actually trigger human extinction, just like a recent study showed concerning exo-civilizations. The solution range from rational, or that is switching alternative energy resources to such bizarre proposals such as building huge megastructures underneath portions of the West Antarctic area to keep it from collapsing. As we know, that is an area that is quickly collapsing because it's warming. Of course, it does not all have to do with climate change. It also has to do with the fact that they have found a hundred volcanoes underneath the ice caps of Antarctica and they've just recently found a new active volcano on the west part of Antarctica. But there may be one factor no one counted on, that's the permafrost and the Arctic lakes. Now as our planet warms up, there are large areas of the permafrost of the Arctic that are melting and this means that they're releasing large quantities of carbon dioxide that's trapped in the soil, which is trapped under the ice. This carbon dioxide sticks around in our atmosphere, meaning that it makes our atmosphere even warmer, causing a faster climate change. That leads to more permafrost melting. As Alaska Daily recently reported a research team led by Katie Walter Anthony concluded that thermokarst lakes formed by melting permafrost are also releasing greenhouse gases from past frozen soil and the most troubling discovery has to do with a body of water called Essie Lake E S I E H bubbling with gas is one of the many lakes scattered across the Arctic that never really freezes and that's due to the emission of methane gas from the bottom of its lake. After this was investigated, after the source of methane was found, Anthony's team found that the source was not the soil, it was the caches of fossil fuels that is ancient organic material found in there. Methane is a stronger initial accelerant when it comes to climate change and Lake Essie is venting large amounts of this methane. If there was more of this it could spell disaster for our efforts to decrease greenhouse gas emissions. Now based on her team's research there's growth of lakes like Essie, and they could double the amount of greenhouse gases coming out from the Arctic. A recent Science Alert article by Jacinta Bowler. The Arctic permafrost really should stay frozen. In many areas it's been frozen for tens of thousands of years, and that way it's locking away greenhouse gases and ancient diseases as well. But unfortunately, our planet's changing climate is denting permafrost around the world. NASA-funded research has confirmed that the expected gradual thawing of the Arctic permafrost is being dramatically sped up by a natural phenomenon known as thermokarst lakes, T-H-E-R-M-O-K-A-R-S-T, thermokarst lakes. These lakes form when a lot of ice in the deep soil melts. Water takes up less space than ice, so this leaves room for water to collect from other sources 
as well, including rain and snow. Katie Walter Anthony, University of Fair Alaska Fairbanks says, when the thermal karst lakes form, they flash thaw these permafrost areas. So they're thawing very quickly. Instead of centimeters of thaw, which is common for terrestrial environments, we've seen 15 meters of thaw beneath newly formed lakes in Goldstream Valley in these past 60 years. Permafrost covers about 24% of the exposed land in the Northern Hemisphere. There's a lot of it. In some areas in the Arctic, the frozen ground is up to 260 feet deep, 80 meters deep. Now, despite the name, permafrost is not always permanent. With unusually warm weather, especially farther away from the Arctic, it can melt, even on a semi-regular basis. But deep in the Arctic, a lot of it has stayed unmelted for tens of thousands of years until today. And that's where a problem starts. The Arctic landscape holds one of the largest natural reservoirs of organic carbon in the world. It's all locked up in the ice, not causing any troubles at the moment. But when it slowly starts to melt, the soil microbes eat the carbon and then produce carbon dioxide and methane which enters the atmosphere and contributes to our global warming. Thermal karst lakes take this process to a whole new level, with permafrost thawing deeper and more quickly, which the researchers call abrupt thawing. Within decades, you can get very deep thaw holes, meters to tens of meters of vertical thaw. Well, maybe this is what we see in uh, northern Russia, in uh, Canada as well, as far as those huge holes are concerned, those mystery holes that um, nobody that go all the way down deep into the earth and nobody knows where they've come from. Within decades, you can get very deep thaw holes, meters to tens of meters of vertical thaw, Antony says, and we have very easily measured ancient greenhouse gases coming out. Just last year, telltale signs of bubbling lakes sprang up in over 200 locations in Siberia. But this, these are the, what we saw uh, recently, the, the huge uh, holes, the deep holes in the ground. Nobody knew how they were made. Uh, some people thought that they were, uh, okay, well, obviously methane, methane gas release. So she has measured, she has uh, located over 200 locations in Siberia. She says this abrupt thawing might be worse than what we originally thought according to researchers from the U.S. and from Germany. The team, part of NASA's Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment, ABOVE for short, traveled to Alaska and to Siberia and measured the methane bubbling out of 72 locations in 11 thermal karst lakes. They then compared the emissions to five locations where gradual thawing occurs instead. The researchers explained their paper, abrupt thaw accelerates mobilization of deeply frozen ancient carbon, increasing carbon-14 depleted permafrost soil carbon emissions by approximately, you won't, get, you won't believe this, 125 to 190% compared to gradual thaw alone. So it's almost uh, twice as fast. Additional computer modeling and satellite imagery from 1999 to 2014, they were able to estimate the amount of permafrost converted to thawed soil, and it's really bad news there as well. Co-author Guaido Gross from Alfred Wegener Institute says, over a few decades, thermocarst lake growth really substantially more carbon than lake loss can lock in permafrost again when the lake bottoms refreeze. Although thermocarst lakes are currently not included in global climate change models because they're small and scattered, the team says this new research shows how important it is to include them. Human fossil fuel emissions are still the number one source of greenhouse gas emissions, but these lakes are important to keep an eye on. He says, we don't have to wait 200 or 300 years to get these large releases of permafrost carbon. Within my lifetime, my children's lifetime, 
It should be ramping up within a few decades. It should peak. This is what Walter Anthony explained. She said, you can't stop the release of carbon from these lakes once they form. This research was published in Nature Communications. Now, the um, having to do with, uh, from, uh, well, I'll leave links below for you for this. The, uh, one of them, the Science Alert also has an embedded video from NASA. It's about uh, one and a half minutes long, having to do with the, you can see the actual bubbling. It's just unbelievable how much uh, gas is coming out. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.